uh, quite absurd is, was my interpretation of what was being said, especially about my own pregnancy, having given birth to Trig four months prior, once uh, the candidacy was, was announced there in August. Um, and frustrated, I guess, that, that I wasn't believed that, yeah, Trig was really my son. You know, that rumor persists to, uh, today even. We're still receiving calls in our state press office regarding Trig and who is the real mother of this child. When did we start accepting as hard news sources bloggers, anonymous bloggers especially? Uh, it's a sad state of affairs in the world of the media today, mainstream media especially, if they're gonna rely on anonymous bloggers for their hard news information. Very scary. What, what is the double standard here? Why people would choose to believe um, lies and n reporters especially not just taking one extra step to uh, get to the facts and report the facts, but instead uh, continue to spread things that are not true. So, you know, I have the same question that, that perhaps you do and, and others who would participate in, in this documentary even trying to figure out, is it political, is it, is it sexism? What what is it that drives someone to believe the worst and perpetuate the worst in terms of gossip lies? Because when I heard Barack Obama state in one of his interviews on national television that his wife was off limits, meaning family's off limits, you know, attack me, I'm the public official, come after me, I can handle it and we'll duke it out if need be, but family's off limits, I naively believed Okay, they, they respected that in him, in his um, demand for, for that to be um, adhered to, naively believing, oh, that must apply to all of us, right? But it didn't apply. This um, report that uh, Bristol and Levi, their high school dropouts, and they're gonna just look for government handouts to raise their child and stuff, nothing could be further uh, from the truth. And I've asked some in the media to correct that, and they haven't corrected it, and that gets frustrating. With regard to the Katie Kirk interview in general, yeah. uh, how did you feel about it when it finished? It did you feel as if it had gone well, not well? No, I knew it didn't go well. I didn't know. I knew it didn't go well the first day, and then we gave her a couple of other segments after that. And my question to the campaign was, after it didn't go well the first day, why were we going to go back for more? And because of however it works in, in you know, that upper echelon of power brokering in, in the media and with spokespersons and all, it was um, told me that, yeah, we were gonna go back for more. And going back for more was not a, a wise decision either. I never saw the interview after Katie edited it, they spliced it together, did whatever they did and then aired it. Never saw how it came across, but my understanding is so many other topics that were brought up certainly weren't uh, portrayed as accurately perhaps as they could have, should have been after that interview. You know, even in the post-election interviews, Dave, that she's done, nobody's really asked her, why didn't you answer that right. question? Because Katie, you're not the center of everybody's universe. Maybe that's why they didn't think to ask that question amongst so many other things to be asked. To me, the question was more along the lines of, do you read? What do you guys do up there? What is it th that you read? And, and, and perhaps I was just too flippant in my answer back to her, but um, of course, I read newspapers, I read publications. I spend a lot of time, of course, reading our local papers and our, the highly circulated publications here in Alaska because that's my job is to know the business of Alaska and our communities, but also USA Today, yes, and New York Times. I believe marriage is meant to be a sacred institution between two unwilling teenagers. <laughs> yeah, teen up. How does that make you feel? The mama grizzly rises up in me hearing things like that. You know, here again. Cool, fine, come attack me. But when you when you make a suggestion like that, that that certainly attacks a kid that kills me it kills me did you know about that when you went on the show no would you have gone on saturday night live if you had known about that i still would have gone on snl because i you know that you've got to show that uh one you know you, you have to be able to laugh at yourself also it seems to me as if um tina fey and katie couric have been treated as almost uh 
heroes or heroines among the uh, media elite for what they, the perception of what they did to you. Do you feel the same way? Oh, job security is important uh, in my agenda here in the state. I'm just helping those outside of my state also keep their jobs secure. But yeah, I did see that Tina Fey was named Entertainer of the Year and Katie Couric's ratings have have risen. And I know that a lot of people are capitalizing on, um, I don't know, I think some perhaps exploiting that was, that was done uh, via me, my family, my administration. That, that's, that's a little bit perplexing. It also says a great deal, though, about our society. I've been interested also to see how uh, Carolyn Kennedy will be handled and if she'll be handled with uh, kid gloves or if, if she will be under such a microscope also. Uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out, and I think that as we watch that, we will perhaps be able to prove that there is um, a class issue here also that was... Um, such a factor in the scrutiny of my candidacy versus, say, the scrutiny of, of what her candidacy may be. If, by chance, you had been chosen uh, as a vice presidential candidate for Barack Obama, uh -huh. let's pretend mm -hmm. he wanted to be really post-partisan, mm -hmm. and there's this governor in Alaska who's a reformer, she's an expert on energy issues, won't this be great for the country? How do you think your candidacy would have been treated differently? I think they would have loved me as a candidate, and I've already lived through that more on a local level. There have been times where here in Alaska, I've taken on my own Republican Party when there has been corruption and I've been one to say, nope, enough is enough. We're gonna clean up this party and the leader's gotta go and we gotta start anew. Well, the mainstream media here in Alaska, they've loved me through those episodes. And then though, the minute that is that I have done something that is, you know, back to the conservative roots and uh, we're going to uh, not grow government here in Alaska and we're going to develop our resources and uh, that's when even the mainstream media here in Alaska, they turn on you. So there, there's so much hypocrisy in it all. It, it's, it's, it's pretty baffling. But yeah, if, had I been chosen perhaps to run as a, a reformer on the Democrat ticket, we well, would have seen an absolutely different and um, I think, uh, if you will, a much prettier profile of Sarah Palin and the Palin family in my administration. Why would you ever want to go through this again? Oh my goodness, that's a darn good question. Sometimes when I open up the paper in the morning and I see something that I know has to be corrected and yet disappointedly realize they're not gonna correct it anyway, so what's the use? That's a good question. Um, I, would, I would do it again though, knowing that th there, is, there is great need in our country for reform. What do you say to uh, people who really like you who want to support you in the future, but who might be influenced by the media that says this Sarah Palin is incompetent and not, not qualified and maybe not even that smart. Uh, what do you tell those people to, to hang their hat on? I wish that there was opportunity for people, especially in the lower 48, to look at my record and my administration's record. Our administration wanting to shrink government again so that our families and our um, private businesses can be the ones growing and prospering, not government, not people having to look to government to solve their problems, but those things that we've done in my administration, a record there. I wish people in the lower 48 who perhaps would be tempted to be influenced by this media saying that we're just um, incompetent or, or um, ill-intended up here, I wish that they could just see our record, let it speak for itself, and um, perhaps believe the facts there versus being sucked into believing what it is that too many in the mainstream media would want them to believe.